Okay, well, we're going to get started. Um, so uh, I just wanted to welcome everybody one more time uh, to the Thornton Academy Virtual Open House. Um, this is one of our series of virtual open houses, and uh, this one promises to be really, really awesome. Um, we've got members of our arts department that are here with us tonight. So you're going to get an introduction um, to Thornton Academy, um, and then you're going to hear from some of our um, wonderful faculty, some of our alumni, and some of our current students um, about all that uh, Thornton Academy has to offer, particularly in visual and performing arts. Um, so it promises to be a really, really wonderful evening um, with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. And yeah, we're just so glad that everybody's here. Um, so if I just want to alert you to a couple things down at the bottom of your screen um, in the Zoom webinar, you see a box that is labeled Q&A. If at any point during the webinar you do have um, a question, please type it into this Q&A box. Um, we will be doing a Q&A session um, that's at the end of tonight's uh, presentation. And some of you have already submitted questions um, when you registered and we do have those and we'll get to those questions as well. Um, if you have any um, problems at any point, um, you can feel free to type something into the chat and we'll be able to, to help you. Um, and you also have a raise hand button that you can use and, and that'll alert us that, that you have a question or something as well. Um, so, I think we're going to get started. I'm going to uh, share my screen and here we go. So um, just a little bit about Thornton Academy. Um, our real belief, and I think that this really fits um, the theme of tonight's presentation of arts, our real belief is that at Thornton Academy, you can be who you are and you can become who you want to be. And that's really what we want for our students. We want them to find their passions, to find their interests, to find whatever makes them um, happy and whatever's going to make them successful in the future. And then we have a really wide program that's going to allow all of our students to, to do that, to be who they are while they're with us. And then um, you're going to hear from our alumni and how they've been able and are still becoming who they want to be um, after they've left us. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Mr. Clint Williams, who is our Director of Enrollment. So Clint, if you could uh, unmute yourself and uh, give yourself a little introduction. All right. Thanks, Katie. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for the panelists for joining. And as Katie did say, um, we got quite a group uh, here communicating to you about their Thornton Academy experience and, and again, on, on what that experience uh, provided them in, in the goal to uh, get to the next level. And, and, you know, Thornton Academy is definitely a school that can appeal to a wide variety of students and, and in many different categories and tonight clearly is, a, is an arts sort of focus and uh, I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to, to share a little bit about Thornton Academy with you and, and what, uh, what you may expect. And I'll, I'll, I'll start right in and talk about some quick facts. Um, you know, in, in this day and age, it's, it's an awesome fact to have and, and Maine is the number one safest state in all of the U.S. And, um, you know, not only with COVID, but with, with all the other negatives that may be happening in other, other cities or, or other places around the United States, crime and drugs and all that kind of stuff. Maine is number one. So I, I think that's a very good statistic. And again, we have a wide variety of student body. We represent, um, I think currently right now on campus, about 30, 30 countries represented um, from students around the world. Um, we've had over 50, 52 countries represented uh, in, in recent years. Uh, so, so we are appealing and providing an opportunity for kids from all over the world, obviously. And I think some of the reasons I'll get to uh, as, I, as I go through this quickly, but you know, over 200 courses offered, over 26 AP classes offered. Um, faculty with outstanding uh, advanced degrees and that really connect with, with students uh, in, in their respective disciplines. It, it's an amazing place. And uh, I'm sure there's something here for, for everybody. And, and we do have people on with us tonight that are from around the world and local, but um, you know, Maine is in the Northeast part of the United States and we're, we're located in the scenic coastal town of Saco, Maine, 
which is only 15 minutes from one of the biggest city in Maine, Portland, Maine, which is a port city. And, you know, we're only 90 minutes from Boston, Massachusetts, which is a, a very historical, famous city in Boston, you know, in Massachusetts. So great location, safety, mountains, lakes, ocean is only a couple of miles away. Um, and it's, it's very accessible to, uh, again, Portland, Maine. So uh, the best of both worlds for sure. And here, here's a, a snapshot of our campus. And, you know, we're set up like a small college actually uh, with fantastic facilities. Um, and some of them include a newly renovated library, a state of the art new media center, television studios. We have a 500 seat theater that is packed during the year. And I, I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say in normal years, we have more than 70 different performances at some level in that theater. Um, so that's pretty exciting. An engineering lab, and you can see in the, in the back sort of right hand side, the, the turf ath athletic stadium as well. Thornton Academy might seem sort of big in terms of a high school, but in fact, when you get here and some of our alum can probably attest to it, it doesn't feel big. It feels, you know, uh, different pockets and, and, and different buildings and whatnot. You, you know, you, you're not in classes with a bunch of kids. You're in classes with 15 to 20 max kids. Um, and, and again, we have tons of opportunities for you to spread out and, and uh, enjoy the academic and extracurricular programs that we do offer. Here, and these four pillars are how we basically operate our week to week um, programs or, or thought process. I mean, respect, compassion, responsibility, and investment. And this, this is the pillars of our tradition that we sort of communicate weekly um, and, and we expect people to, to share those principles for sure. And yeah, simply put, they are, they are the guiding principles. Um, so, and, and we take them very serious. A quick snapshot of our academics. I mean, obviously lots of young people are really excited about the arts and about sports and, and, and about different um, opportunities for clubs and activities, but all of that can happen at the same time that, that you have these outstanding academic offerings. Again, a, a wide array of um, upper school classes, over 200. And you, and you can see down below, astronomy is an interesting one, movie making, uh, web design, digital imaging. Um, you know, just to, uh, to name a few not very uh, common classes at the high school level, marine biology, for example, robotics. I mean, it's just an awesome opportunity that can that can and does in fact cater to a, a wide range of students. And Third, Thornton Academy also has a middle school. It's called TAMS, Thornton Academy Middle School. And again, it's a smaller version of the upper school. And, and you know, they're, a, they're a, a school of about 200, 220 kids, grades six through eight, boys and girls. Um, we do have international students in that program as well. However, not as, as vast, around eight or 10 students. And I did forget to mention that, that um, as TAMS is Apple certified, their staff is Apple certified, we have um, been uh, given the award of being an Apple distinguished school. So not only do we have teachers that are versed in being able to utilize the Apple products at a very, very high level, which can, you know, an iPad can be more than just a, something to have fun with and play games. It's actually used to uh, for, for very excellent academic opportunities that connect teachers and students together. But again, back to TAMS, it's, uh, it's a smaller, very close-knit uh, school that also uh, has teachers and, and folks taking care of young people at a very, very high level. And, and TAMS is considered one of the very best uh, private middle schools around here. So it's, uh, it's, it's another excellent opportunity for those kids grades six through eight. 
athletics is, is one of our signature programs along with the arts. And if, if you are interested in any sport or do in fact play a sport or passionate about sports, I mean, Thornton Academy is, is in the top 1% of high school success uh, sports success in the nation. And that doesn't mean we're in the top, you know, like we're not the top 1% um, teams in the nation. It just means our kids are successful within, within their conferences and within their state tournaments. 57 total athletic teams. Uh, the vast majority of our students are participating in sports at some level, 72% of them. And, and over the years, we've, we've, uh, accumulated 56 state championships and it could be golf football lacrosse hockey uh, softball i mean it, it's a combination of all those things boarding life you know i've been in boarding schools now for over 26 years and i i in my previous place was was a boarding school as well and and I came to TA a couple years ago and and I've got to say the boarding life at Thornton Academy is dynamic it is exciting it's fun it's it's an opportunity to to make friends again from from make friends with kids from all over the world be in a very familial setting that has lots of activities lots of structure lots of accountability too um, and you have actual teachers that live on campus in the dorms with kids that are that are accessible for help or support or guidance encouragement all those things seven days a week so we have about a hundred uh, we're going to have about a hundred and 165 to 180 depending on how things work out uh, students uh, boys and girls living on our campus um, and uh, again it's an it's an outstanding opportunity that the, the dorms are immaculate they're great our residential life program is robust and again, dynamic weekend activities um, and, and just everything in place. We have a, a full-time residential nurse on staff all the time. So, uh, you know, all, all the boxes are checked and you guys are gonna have a great time. And, and truly, I think one of the measuring factors, if you will, of how we encourage people to be who they are and, and, and be who they want to be. And again, everybody's different. Everybody's got their, their, their different level. And going forward, we just want to make sure you're prepared for what your level is. Here's an example of some recent four-year college acceptances. And again, you can see to the right that uh, you know, it's, a, it's a representation of some very, very high-level universities. And it's a representation of, of universities that are catering more towards kids specific needs. Uh, Norwich University, for example, is, is one of those. And it's just, it's, you know, we send kids to great schools every year. So thank you for listening. What I would like to do now is, is introduce a really awesome person and she's the arts department chair and dance teacher at Thornton Academy. And here's Emma Campbell. Hello everyone, good evening, and we're so glad you could make it out with us tonight. Um, my name is Emma Campbell, as Clint said. I am a full-time faculty member here at Thornton and I teach dance and also serve as the department chair for our visual and performing arts faculty. We have so many amazing things that happen here every day at TA. And I hope that this uh, event tonight just gives you an idea of what an arts education at TA can provide for you. I myself am an alumni of Thornton Academy graduating in 2004. I received my bachelor's degree um, of the arts in dance and anthropology from Bates College and my master's in arts administration from the Savannah College of Art and Design. I truly love my job um, as many of the panelists could attest to tonight and I love working with the students and community here at Thornton Academy. I can't wait for you to get a glimpse throughout this presentation of what we do here each and every day. And Katie is gonna to move to a short video that we have prepared for you tonight.
The arts at TA has improved my experience at TA tremendously because it gives me an outlet that I know not a lot of other high schools have and it's just a lot of fun to be able to go to school and enjoy something. What's so unique about the TA program is that it has created such an inclusive community unlike any other that allows anyone of any experience or skill level to participate in this art. The reason I take arts classes at Thornton Academy is because it gives me a creative way to express my emotions. I'm able to show how I'm feeling without having to speak on them using art or music instead. de-stress from your other classes. It also lets your creative juices flow and let you find a new hobby or a passion for art. of the Visual and Performing Arts at Thorne Academy has been a highlight of my high school career. Awesome, thank you, Katie. So we just wanted to quickly give you an introduction to our visual and performing arts faculty. Um, Mrs. Altman, Mrs. Mary, Ms. Thomas, Mr. Hanwright, and Mr. Drakeup, whom you'll meet later this evening, all teach in the upper school in both entry-level visual art courses and in specialized studio courses. Mr. Drakeup also teaches art for our students at TAMS in grades six through eight. Our performing arts faculty covers many disciplines. Ms. Cram and myself teach all of the dance courses in our four-year program. Mr. Hanwright directs the TA players and teaches our theater and acting courses. Ms. Fluelling is our orchestra director and she runs one of the largest string orchestra programs in our state. Mrs. Murray is our director of vocal music. Mr. Stebbins and Ms. Witherall Stebbins they are not married, but they are related, uh, teach instrumental music, and Mr. Stebbins also teaches our music classes at TAMS. If you have any specific questions for these faculty about their respective disciplines, you feel free to contact admissions and they will get you in touch with the right person. So like Clint had previously mentioned, the arts is a very well-renowned program for Thornton Academy and is something that is well known. Um, even just this year, I've been in contact with many of my colleagues who work at both private and public schools. And it's, it's well known in the community, the support that Thornton Academy gives to the, to the visual and performing arts. Um, we offer 34 art courses. As Clint had mentioned, we have a 500 seat theater. We have a four year dance program, which I could speak about all night, but I won't. <laughs> That's the only one of its kind in the state of Maine. And so there truly is something for all students, whatever your interests may be. So this is some um, sample photos from our visual arts at TA. We love to celebrate our distinguished art students here. Students regularly submit works into various art contests that are quite prestigious, such as the Scholastic Art Awards, the National Art Education Association, the Maine Arts Education Association, our in-house permanent art collection, and many more. Um, many of our visual arts students go on to formally study art in college and follow paths in the fine arts, education, graphic design, fashion, illustration, and many more areas. We have three large art studios on campus that our classes run in, 
including areas for both print and digital photography and pottery and sculpture. We have an extracurricular art club at the high school and visual art students also regularly participate in community service events and for on-campus events. Um, thank you. The performing arts at TA, um, as, as Clint had mentioned, there are so many performances that happen on campus. And in a typical year, our students are traveling both around the state and regionally to various performances and festivals. We have multiple shows in each discipline each year. So the dance program puts on a show, orchestra, um, wind ensemble, concert band, jazz band, and our, our TA players, which is our theater program, provides multiple opportunities for students to participate in theater, not only through acting, but through technical theater, set design, costume. Um, you can see a picture in here from our last full stage musical that we did in 2019, which was Mamma Mia. That was really exciting for us because we'd wanted to do that show for a long time. We have a picture from an uh, orchestra concert and out of this world was the theme. And you can see um, by the background that the students had and a picture of our students who traveled to uh, England with our theater program to participate in a theater workshop um, at the Globe Theater as part of a Shakespeare residency program. We do offer those opportunities for students as well. In 2019, the dance students traveled to New York City to participate in various workshops. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Josh Drakeup, who is a visual arts teacher and can talk more about the TAMS experience. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Emma. Uh, my name is Josh Drakeup. I'm the visual art teacher at uh, Thornton Academy Middle School, or TAMS, um, and I also teach a course um, of introductory art at the upper school. Um, so I have a really uh, interesting and unique perspective where I can kind of um, uh, get to know students as they're coming through the middle school and see them really excel in the upper school. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have that um, ability to be able to kind of prep them for that, that situation and for those courses. Um, and it's really awesome to see them um, take what they've learned at TAMS um, from the performing and visual arts uh, and really thrive at the upper school. Um, it's great to see them in their you know, musicals and plays and um, all of the amazing stuff that they get to do up there. So that's, it's a really nice uh, position to be in and I feel really lucky and fortunate to be able to be a part of the school. Um, I wanna talk to you a little bit about uh, the visual and performing arts at TAMS. Um, we're, uh, like um, Emma was saying, we're a little bit smaller of a school. Um, we have about 220 kids. Um, so I'm, I'm the, the art teacher for the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, and uh, what that allows for me to do is to really be able to get to know my students um, and understand what they're interested in. Um, and so uh, I work closely with my colleague, Dave Stebbins, um, who Emma introduced, um, who's the uh, performing arts teacher um, and he focuses on music, uh, orchestra, band, and uh, the mu uh, musical, excuse me. Um, and so again, we teach in the same room. Um, we're fortunate enough to have a brand new, well, almost brand new, I guess, five, four or five years at this point, but um, a really nice big uh, visual art and performing art room to um, teach in. Um, we've got all the materials that we need. He's got plenty of storage for all of his band equipment. Um, and so it makes it a really great atmosphere for kids to be able to come in um, and have easy access to, to materials um, and then have both of us to work with who are, uh, you know, um, really interested in having students um, thrive in the arts. Um, so I'll talk to you a little bit about what the visual arts looks like, um, and then I'll try to fumble through what, <laughs> what the performing arts looks like. Um, so all of the, the courses um, at TAMS for visual arts um, really are focused on um, what students are interested in. Uh, and so I start every year by kind of taking a survey of what kids are, are wanting to learn. Um, and at this point, after doing it for so many years, um, I have a really good idea of what they're probably gonna say, uh, but I do like to um, give them a little bit of a choice to, to think about what they're excited about um, and use that passion to help them explore uh, new ideas and, and new materials and new processes. 
Um, and so it's really exciting um, that I get to have that kind of autonomy to, um, to do that with students. Um, we do, I do try to uh, structure the classes so that we get uh, experience using lots of different materials, um, including drawing, painting, um, ceramics, fiber arts. Uh, we definitely use our Apple products and make digital art. Um, and so uh, it's, it's really important, I think, to have students explore a lot of different materials. Um, I do run an art club that meets uh, twice a month um, after school. And in the art club, we get a chance to um, have a small group of students that, again, decide what they're interested in. So um, students come to art club knowing that they get to kind of choose uh, which direction we're going to go. Um, and kind of explore um, the things that we've learned in class a little bit uh, more in depth. Um, we also try to set up um, service learning opportunities for them. Uh, in the past, we've done murals um, and fundraisers. I remember one year we designed a uh, wooden beach chair. We painted that for, for, uh, um, uh, for a, a fundraiser to support a local charity. So. Um, we have lots of uh, really interesting after school opportunities uh, through the art club. Um, I'll talk briefly about Mr. Stebbins' role. He teaches uh, a general music class to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, um, and then band and chorus. Uh, and within those classes, he's really focusing a lot on music theory, uh, popular music and composition, uh, African drumming, which is really special. We have about uh, 25 to 30 African drums that were made in Africa that were brought over from a service learning trip. Um, and he gets those out every spring. And it's really nice to, to be in the room when those are being used. Um, and of course, he, he uh, does all kinds of performances with the students as well. Um, band and chorus meet uh, during study hall. Uh, and it's kind of an optional, um, you know, if you're not in band and chorus, you're in study hall. Uh, type of situation. So um, it, again, it's really nice to be in the classroom, listening to the students uh, learn their instruments or practice uh, singing. And he um, chooses some really nice music that, um, you know, is more contemporary. Uh, and he's, he's into, again, allowing students the opportunity to um, have a say in their, in their education and in their learning. So uh, it's really nice, nice to see that happen. Uh, he does, um, co-lead, I think at this point, a musical. Um, and so as part of uh, uh, prop making, uh, the art club is also involved in creating props for the musical. Um, but he puts on an amazing show uh, with Miss Cram. And uh, they do that uh, usually every spring. I think the last few years um, was Elf the musical and uh, Madagascar. Madagascar, that's the one. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh, kids were wearing puppets and stuff. So it's just, it's a really special uh, situation that we have going on here. Um, and again, I just feel really uh, privileged to be a part of, of this, uh, this program. I can introduce um, next, we're gonna move on to some alumni in our panel. We have Camden Lozier and Elizabeth Lester. They each have their own slide, but they happen to be together because they are roommates. Um, they were both very involved in the arts at Thornton and they can tell you a little bit about their experience and what they're doing now. Hello, um, my name is Camden and this is- Liz, I'm Liz. Um, and uh, we both, we both did a lot at TA. We both studied yeah. music, dance. I did visual arts. We did theater. Mm -hmm. We were pretty much in um, all of the performing, art, performing arts um, scope of things. Yeah. Um, and then after TA, I went to NYU for dance, um, mostly because of Emma. Um, I don't think I would have gone to performing arts uh, college if it weren't for the programs at TA. I think that I wouldn't have had the confidence and the mentality to even think about going for dance if it hadn't been for Emma and the program that she created um, while we were there. She started mm -hmm. working there while we were there and um, she created this incredible four-year dance program that really sets you up. It just gives you so many opportunities. Yeah. Um, the entire arts department does at TA. It gives you so many opportunities to 
I don't know, foster a sense of art artistry and um, it offers you a space for that self-expression. Yeah. Um, and then, um, and that kind of jump started me to go to NYU. And then from NYU, I went um, and became a part of the National Tour of Pippin, which is a Broadway revival. Uh, and then from there, finished school and then went maneuvered kind of into the associate choreographer world um, where I started setting national tours on behalf of um, the choreographers of the Broadway shows. Um, and my first one was Finding Neverland, which actually Liz was in. He was my boss <laughs> um, at one point in time. Which <laughs> now, is hilarious. Now we live together. Now we live together. <laughs> um, and uh, we also live with another alumni of TV, yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but um, and then from there, I started setting the national uh, national tour and the revival of Pippin around the world. I've set it in um, Australia and Japan so far, and I've worked on it in the US. Um, yeah, and I think that it's just, it's, we all talk about it a lot, actually, how not a lot of people get the opportunities they get at TA. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it really is like what everybody has said, you can be anything you want there. And a huge part of that is because the teachers just, they encourage you to be whoever you want to be and explore everything you want to explore and just dive in head first and they challenge you and support you even after college. Mm -hmm. I keep in, we keep in touch with Emma all the time and we feel supported, like so fundamentally supported by the um, teachers at TA. And so, yeah, it just like they, I don't know, you want to say anything more about the tools? And yeah, stuff, but... um, I, backtracking you said something about like the, the the dance program and the arts program i i think like before i became part of the ta dance program i was taking ballet classes but even coming into it i gained so much more confidence because of the faculty and because i felt mm. encouraged or empowered to explore my creativity mm. and my artistry um Honestly, I say this all the time and she knows if it weren't for Emma, I would not, I would not have per, like pursued arts. And I yeah. say it all the time. Emma is like the one person who just brought that out of me and was mm -hmm. like, no, you can do this. Like you can, yeah. you can go for this. And I think that that speaks to all the faculty too. I, there, there's so many faculty in the arts program who just encourage and, and push their students push in the, I say that, you know, in a like productive. Way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it just is such a good program for sorry, our, our cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> it is just such a good program for any level, like yeah. somebody who doesn't have any dance experience. Mm. I was amazed at just some of the talent that came in and they didn't have much dance experience. But then I watched them at the end of the year and I was like, wow, it just yeah improve so much yeah i mean yeah. when i started i had like zero dance yeah, experience for example and i just like guess i had like a natural thing and emma was just like you have to do this you have to do it come join dance company yeah. like you know and before Dan before emma started working there like there were no guys on dance company it was like not a thing and then i don't know emma just like fostered this diverse space and just it felt like such a safe space and I just like dived in, fell in love with it. She pushed me really hard in a really good way. And I just realized I had such a passion yeah. for it. And then she was like, you just like, you have to do it. And I did it. And I, I don't know, I, I would like, I, you know, I bow down to her cause she's just like, she really is. And everybody is like everybody in that department, yeah. in the arts department is so, so encouraging. Yeah. Just, so I don't know. Even, cause I didn't, I before before I did the TA arts, I had no recollection of like my acting abilities mm. or my singing abilities as well. And then I just dove in. I don't know. It was yeah. cats. We did cats. And then after that, we did Pippin. And I think like going into college, we both had a sense of ourselves as an artist, like developing yeah. ourselves as an artist, which is like not something that is so rare. It's just not something that people get before college. Yeah. And when I talk about TA, people are like, oh, you went to a performing arts high school. I was like, no, it's just like they have such an incredible program. And um, yeah, it is one of a kind. It's really unique. Yeah, they and, definitely give you the tools to yeah. prepare you and take you into the future. Yeah. 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 Confidence. Yeah. I think it's like 
that's the big thing is it's such a safe space too. Yeah. Like it's really challenging, but it's really safe. It's not like one of those, I mean, I, I hear about a lot of people who went to Korean arts high school and they felt threatened throughout mm -hmm. it because it, it can be a lot for people, but I don't know, they just offer such a safe, productive learning environment that pushes you further, I think, than yeah. any other kind of environment. All right, thank you guys so much. That was really awesome. So such a really, really, yeah, authentic testimonial. So thank you guys. All right, we're gonna jump to a couple of our current students. Um, so we've got Claire. Claire, you're a senior this year, right? Yes, I am a senior. All right, you wanna tell us a little bit about what you've done in, in, uh, in arts at, at Thornton and what you're gonna do next year? Absolutely. Um, so I actually chose to attend TAMS instead of my public middle school in Saco because of the arts program that I had heard about at TA. And I really think at TAMS, you're just able to bring your own personality into everything you do. And Mr. Draco was actually my art teacher all three years. And I just remember being able to add a little bit of myself into everything I did there. And I think at TAMS, especially, you really get to explore all aspects of the arts and find what you really excel in. And going into TA, I was able to use that when building my schedule and figuring out which arts classes I wanted to take. Currently this year, I take AP Music Theory, um, Chamber Singers and Trouble Choir, which are the audition choirs. And I'm a part of Dance Company, which is the audition dance group. And I've been a part of almost every musical and show um, outside, like after school. And really just the arts community is such a big family and everyone brings something different and you're all welcome no matter what, no one is left out or left behind. And we all work so hard together, not only for our own success, but for the success of all of our peers because we want everyone to succeed. That's just what a family is, we're working for all of us. And I think I really just have been able to connect with all of my teachers so much every teacher, every director I've had at TA in the arts department. And they really take the time to get to know you and help make a personal path for you. So in the fall, I do plan to attend Berkeley College of Music in Boston. And I really, I think I owe just that opportunity to all of my directors and teachers at the arts department because they supported me so much and personally made a path for me to get there. And I always knew I wanted a career in music but they really just helped me plan what I wanted to do and find out how I wanted to do that and keep my personality in them. So I'm very grateful for all of the arts department at TA. All right, well, thank you so much, Clara. We wish you the best next year. We're gonna miss you, but um, thank you. And we've got one more current student um, with us tonight. So Teddy, you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Teddy Gluck. I'm a sophomore day student here at TA and I've been in the arts here since I've been here. Um, so I transferred here to TA uh, from middle school. I went to a different uh, district in Maine and I actually came here because the art, uh, the, the um, I'm just looking at my notes, sorry. The arts program at the district I went to, uh, let's just say it wasn't the best. Um, and I heard that TA had like a really, really great arts program and I had seen some of the place that they had done here and it was like spectacular. And I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna go here for high school. And I came and it was amazing. Like the arts program here is just spectacular. I just really went off script. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and art has always been like kind of really important in my life since I was a kid. My, I, it just always has been. And so um, TA's art pro, arts program has just been like spectacular and like fostering the creative space that is necessary when you are really into art, I guess. And it's um, it like has just like helped me so much get like jump so much further and like the art career that I want to go into than I think I would have gotten if I went to any other school. Like this, uh, the arts program at TA is just spectacular. Uh, I just have to say, uh, I'm uh, the classes that I'm taking this year that are in the arts are movie making, visual arts one and dance two. And ironically, I'm in both uh, Ms. Campbell and uh, Mr. Jacobs classes in uh, this year. 
Um, and they're really great. Like, I don't think any of the teachers here are bad at all. I've had, I think I've been in like 18 classes in all of my years here at TA. And it's none of the teachers have been like mean. They're all been spectacular and like fostering the creative space that I just mentioned. And um, it's just a really great uh, place to, um, and like let your creative aspects like get bigger and more refined I guess because you get to choose the classes that you want to take and there's such like a wide selection of classes that you can take at Thorin that I think it's so so great and so like um individualized and that's very uh like really great so awesome all right, thank you so much, Teddy. Um, and I think, yeah, you really talked a lot about the inclusivity that we have at Thornton. Um, and so I think that's gonna be the first question that I'm gonna really tackle. So we've, we're starting to get questions come through the, through the Q&A. So all of our participants, uh, attendees at this point, if you have a question, please feel free to type it through the Q&A. But I'm gonna go first to a question that we that we got from someone that, that already wrote one in, which is talking a little bit about, um, do you need to to be experienced to participate in the arts program. So a lot of you guys, um, you know, are really doing professional things. But Emma, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you need to be experienced to participate in the arts program at Thornton Academy? Oh, no, this is my favorite topic. I talk about this to my students all the time. In fact, when we're um, just from my perspective, and I know that, we, you know, I'm talking about dance because that is what I teach. But obviously, there's this is for all of our disciplines. But I even do a unit where I talk about dancers who didn't start dancing until they were 18, 19, 20 years old, who went on to become very famous because I know the reputation of our programs and I know how they're perceived by the public. And I know how that can feel as a new student to come in. I myself didn't start training and dance seriously until I was a teenager. So I can talk about that perspective firsthand. But um, I, I think we all have to remember that everybody starts somewhere. And it's about the work that you put in and what the outcome is that you want, but it, you absolutely do not have to have any previous training in any of our disciplines. Awesome. All right, good. And, and I know Camden and Liz, you guys kind of talked a little bit about that already too, but um, I think that's probably reassuring for people. Um, Excellent. All right. So um, I'm going to hop to another question that we got previously, which was what is um, campus life like? So we do have people uh, with us that are from the local area, but then we do have some people from other countries. So um, I'll talk a little bit about campus life. Clint already talked a little bit about it, but um, you know, we just have a really like the inclusive arts community. I would say that our, our um, on campus community is also very inclusive. Um, so We've got uh, kids that come from 28 different countries this year, all over the US, all over the world. Um, and we really work to create, using our four pillars of respect, responsibility, compassion, and investment, um, we really look to create a community um, that is going to be open to all. Um, whether you're interested in the arts, whether you're not, um, we've got some real, you know, serious artists here with us today, but um, we also have students that are on the um, varsity football team and also play in the orchestra. And so this idea of really being who you are and becoming who you want to be, I think is 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 really true. So in the dorm, um, that's what you find. You've got people from all over that have lots of different backgrounds that, that live together and do create that um, family atmosphere. So um, yeah. So we've got a question that came in through here um, this evening, um, and that's about uh, supporting students with different learning skills. Um, so I'll sort of tackle that one, um, and then maybe Emma and Josh, is from, you can give from the teacher's perspective as well. Um, and I can say that we are we try to be as supportive as we can. Um, we do not um, for in. If it's, it's kind of complicated, but um, students that come from Saco, Dayton, and Arundel qualify for our, our full special education services. Um, but if you're if you're not coming from one of those towns, then we do offer um, support plans through our school counseling office. Um, but we do try to be as supportive um, with students with that have learning disabilities as we can. Emma and Josh, I don't know if you guys want to talk a little bit about that from the teacher perspective. Sure. Um, I, I just want to mention, and I don't know anything about the creation of these plans because I don't work in those departments specifically, but I wanted to mention 
the amount of energy that goes into creating a team for students who require any kind of additional support. Um, we have our school counselors, social workers. We sometimes work with outside clinicians to develop this personalized plan that is very specific for that caters to the needs of our students. That plan is communicated to all classroom teachers so that it's understood what that student needs to be successful. And I think this this comprehensive construction of the plan makes it so that the students can achieve. It's really amazing to watch and it's really amazing to support the students in that way, especially kids in the arts who we may have from like freshman to senior year to see that blossom where they can become advocates for themselves and what they need is one of, I think, the best parts of being a classroom teacher. Yeah, that was uh, really well said, Emma. Um, and at the middle school, we have um, a, a teacher, essentially a special education teacher who will pull students out of class um, to work on them and help them with um, issues they may be having in class. Uh, teachers at the middle school have um, the ability to uh, bring or uh, identify students who may need extra support um, through various levels. Um, and to the principal and to the special education teacher and working with parents, uh, we're really able to come up with a, with a solid plan that will um, really help support that student. Um, and it's really, again, like it's really nice to see those students um, be able to get that support and blossom, especially uh, through the arts. Um, I know in my classroom uh, and, and, and I'm sure the other uh, Emma and other art teachers do this a lot, but um, we're able to um, really uh, help students focus in on, um, you know, what their issues are or what kind of skills they have um, and differentiate a lot of uh, our uh, instructional methods, right, to be able to support them. So, um, yeah, definitely lots of support here at the school for, for those types of learners. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just add to really quickly. There's a lot of cross curricular connection. So I teach dance, but maybe I have a student who's doing really well in my class, but struggling in some of their core content areas. It's very common for us to connect with those teachers and say, you know, so and so needs these extra supports. How can I help assist them? And I think, I don't want to say incentivize, but I think it helps the students to focus on that area that they need because they want to be so included in these other things. Um, and it, it really makes a difference in how the students achieve. Awesome. All right. So thanks, guys. We're going to um, sort of transition here. We got another question coming through about um, residential and boarding life and the freedom that the students have. Um, and I would say that that is also one of the benefits of Thornton Academy is that our um, residential program does allow for student freedom and student choice. So um, in the afternoon, um, you have um, some free time. And so that is from about three to about 5.30 just before dinner. And that is when you might participate in dance company, you might do a club, you might do a sport. Um, but if you have a day and you're an on-campus student where you don't have one of those activities, um, then you are able to leave campus. So you do need to check in and check out with the dorm parent that's on duty in your dorm. Um, and we also use WhatsApp to communicate. Um, so, you know, parents be assured that we know where your kids are, um, but students, you do have the opportunity um, to leave campus. And really close to our campus, we have a Starbucks that's only about a five minute walk. We've got cafes and restaurants that are really close to campus. There's a pharmacy, a grocery store, restaurants. I said restaurants a couple of times. Um, there's a trail, there's a, the river that you can walk to that kids really like going to. So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do. And that's one of the nice things about our campus is that it's very safe um, and very green and very beautiful. Um, but we are also close to things um, that, that you know, the students would really want to go to, so. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to um, hop to one other question that we got prior and then um, and then we'll see where we're going. And that is a question that I'm sure everyone is on everyone's mind and is about um, what's going to happen next year. And uh, I would say that at this point, everybody's tuning in like what? 
Uh, I would say at this point, it's too early to say. So um, right now, uh, Thornton Academy is doing a hybrid model. And so our students are in the classroom um, or have the opportunity to be in the classroom two days a week. Um, and next year, we are hoping to go back um, full time, but it's too early to say. We are taking all of our guidance from um, the CDC, the Dis Center for D Disease Control, the governor's office. Um, but we want to do all we can to have our students in the classroom as much as possible in a safe way. So um, decisions have not been made um, yet for, for next fall. Um, and yeah, we are at this point having on-campus activities, um, including sports and arts. So we're really excited about that. Um, I'd like to add a little bit to that, yeah. if I may. And in, you know, as we think about going into the fall, we are very we're preparing as if we're going to be uh, full time, face to face, and we're also preparing for where we're at now, and, and that is a a, a hybrid model that also involves kids having the opportunity to, to participate in, in extracurriculars, absolutely. But um, you know, with all the recent news that we're getting and as recent as today with vaccines uh, coming in faster than, than we thought even a week ago to our schools um, and, and also with the adjustments made at, at the at, at the political level, you know, our, our current administration adjustments being made you know, we're, we're preparing to come back full time. And the good thing is, is if we happen not to, we've positioned ourselves to be very good at where we're at now in terms of the hybrid model and in terms of still providing kids living uh, on our campus and also participate or not living on our campus, but participating in our extracurriculars. Um, they're still having the chance to do that. And so they, they, they still have a social life. They still have an opportunity to, to involve themselves in all the things that the, that the young folks on the panel said tonight. They're, they're making connections with our community and our, our excellent staff to still work towards the goals that they have set themselves for. Or in fact, if they haven't set the, their goals and they come in brand new, you know, they're still gonna meet with folks like Emma and, and, her, and her teammates, if you will, to be able to forge some of that, those opportunities. So we're, we're, we're anxious, just as everybody is, to go full-time and we're preparing to go full-time. Awesome. All right, and not seeing any more questions, um, I'm gonna wrap us up tonight by asking um, our current students and our two alumni, um, to, to um, reflect, if you will, or just sort of go back in time and think about um, a favorite Thornton Academy moment. So what is one of your favorite moments um, that you have had on our campus? It could be involving our arts program. It doesn't have to be. Um, this is kind of a hard question. I'm putting you guys on a spot, but do any of you have a favorite TA moment um, that you would be willing to share with us? So. Is there anyone that wants to go first with a favorite TA moment? <laughs> um, I have one. Okay, thanks, Claire. Um, it's kind of more of like a tradition that I do in my classes every year, but in treble choir, chamber singers, and dance company, we all do this for usually, I think, Valentine's Day, um, but also like Thanksgiving, just around kind of those times where we're thinking about the people we care about. We, in those classes, we all kind of get a sheet of paper with our name on it. And we sit in a circle and we pass it around writing something positive or something that we like about the person's paper that we have. And so then you end up getting your paper back and it has tons of amazing positive things. You know, you're amazing dancer, but also about our personality. And it just, it's kind of just like the little keepsake of all the connections that I have with these people in the arts. And I still have every paper I've done. And we even still found a way to do it virtually this year um, with half the students on campus and half off on the specific day, but we still were able to do it online. Um, and so I think that's gotta be a favorite just because it really shows how everyone is so uplifting for everyone. And we really do care about each other. That's a really great moment, yeah. That was that was really awesome. Yeah, and I, that's so neat that you like kept them and you guys found a way to keep that tradition alive this year. So that's really cool. I have a moment. If, <laughs> um, so I think for me, 
I, it, it, it's not really happening this year as much because there's not as many people and it's a, a lot different just without with the different days and stuff but last year especially I think my favorite moments were the moments before and right after school started and ended where you would just talk to your friends and you got to see them and in the big atrium area people used to like sit and like we would talk to all our friends and I think that's mainly like when I got a lot of like my key socialization in for the day and it just like very uh like I guess it was a lot it was very nice to just like see all your friends right before the day starts to like get you going and then right after it and you're like uh wow that day was kind of hard I had a test and then you could see all your friends and they'd be like oh yeah you probably did fine and it was just it was nice to like get that socialization in and I don't think I would have I think that's like a very like specific part of the Thornton Academy where it just feels like a community with all of your peers and everything because it, it felt very inviting. That's really awesome. And as someone that is new as a ninth grader too, I think that really says a lot that you felt so part of the community right off the bat. So thanks for sharing that with us. Camden and Liz, do you guys? Yeah, yeah. we were trying to figure out there's like so many, but I know I think um. <laughs> For me, I was telling Liz this, for me, we did a duet our senior year and I remember we showed it to Emma and we all like hugged backstage after because she was really proud of us. And I don't know, I feel like there was that like that moment, it was like right before we graduated and Liz and I like had a really strong friendship um, in high school, mainly because of dance company. Yeah. And um, I don't know, just like feeling that we've like continued that friendship professionally and personally since then just like I don't know it, I will always cherish that memory yeah. yeah it's it's so hard because it feels like so long ago um but I, I just think not one moment in particular but just moments I guess were just mm -hmm. rehearsals like after like for dance company for theater I don't know it just you know everybody coming together taking the time after after school like teachers students just making art and making magic and having so much fun and just exploring mm -hmm. your creativity and who you are as an artist and having fun at the same time making know. something bigger than yourself yes making yes. magic Emma yeah, yeah making magic yeah yeah, yeah. I don't That's know so true yeah, it was also very inspirational. It really was. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you um, to all of our panelists and thank you to all of the attendees. Um, we hope that you took some moments of joy out of this and, and can really see um, that, you know, we come together as a community. We support each other in that goal of ours to that our, all of our students are able to become who they are and become who they want to be, whether it's through our arts program, through our STEM program, through our athletics program, or, or just, you know, finding one class or one teacher that you really connect with. So um, thank you again for, for sticking with us tonight. Um, feel free to contact us at any point at admissions at thorntonacademy.org. Um, we're able to email with you. We can set up one-on-one -on -one calls if you'd like to learn more. Um, and if you'd like to be connected with um, anyone from our arts faculty, uh, you know, please feel free to reach out to us at any point. So panelists, I'm going to ask you guys to stay on for a second, um, just to debrief. And uh, again, thank you all for, for being with us this evening. <laughs>